This is a, a map of the hand, as I explained. The hands uh, are a, a map of what the life, and each uh, section of the hand has specific meanings. Uh, the, this is the one of the charts that I use when I teach a class. I, I drew this by hand, but I'm not a great artist, but it, it does bring out a, a point when I, when I use something this large. And what you basically have to do with the hand uh, is you have to go over one little section at a time and understand it. Because you look at the whole hand and you feel like screaming or yelling, what is all of this? So uh, I'm going to go over some of this uh, very slowly. And, and uh, I'll point some things out. And then I'm going to go over each line in a major way on, on separate little films uh, to describe what they are. And uh, I'll, I'll give you some comments and some ideas. And when you look at a hand, you do it in sections in your mind, and you get it to make sense. Uh, when you look at everything, you go, oh, my God, what is all of this? Well, let, let me start getting you familiar with the hand. This is the lifeline. And the lifeline has to do with, uh, first of all, how healthy somebody is, and uh, people sometimes, in a very callous way, say you have a short lifeline, a long lifeline. But with lines, the important thing is not only the, how long it is, but the quality of the line. Uh, if, the, if this uh, area here is the Mount of Venus, where my hand is, right around here, and if you looked at the lifeline as a balloon or a, a balloon full of water <clears throat> or a beach ball full of air, if it, there was a weak spot on this line, that would be more important than the, how long it is. Uh, you want it to be strong and not weak. If it's tasseled or it has holes in it or something like that, it's a weak line. And, and uh, where, the, where it's tasseled or where there's a bubble, call it a bubble. If there was a bubble in a water balloon, you'd say that was a weak spot. Well, then uh, there would be a weakness with it. So this basically is the Mount of Venus. And again, uh, uh, Venus ha has to do with Taurus or Libra. And if you see a prominent mount, Taurus or Libra would have something to do with the life. And this part of the thumb right here has to do with logic. And this part is willpower. And I said before that if... Um, the last phalanx of the uh, thumb it bends backwards. The person's very adaptable. Now, sometimes the lifeline has an inner lifeline, like two lines. It's like an extra thick balloon. And if it has what they call an inner lifeline or a backup lifeline, it gives it extra strength. The line that comes off the lifeline, uh, sometimes it's hooked up and attached, and sometimes it's unattached, but I'll go into the individual propensities of the lines, is the headline. This has to do with uh, how someone thinks mentally, but it also has to do with physical attributes of the eyes, the nose, the ears, the throat, um, any, anything to do with a neck or above as far as a physical ailment. So if you found a bubble on the lifeline and something on the headline at about the age indicated, it may in, uh, indicate an illness or, a, or an injury to the head or to the eyes or something like that. Now, <clears throat> we went over the fingers before, but the index finger is Jupiter. And Jupiter has to do with power and control. It was said that Napoleon had an extra large Jupiter finger, and that's what made him a tyrant, and that's what made him bossy. And it's with the Jupiter finger that you tell someone to come to you or you point to something and, and you try to indicate where they should go. So it's a power finger. And uh, Jupiter has to do with Pisces and Sagittarius and people born on the 3rd, 12th, 21st, or 30th of any month. And... and uh, and then we look at Saturn, the middle finger. Saturn has a lot to do with being studious. It also has to do with justice and fairness and education. And uh, if somebody has a ring of Saturn, which is indicated here, uh, they tend to isolate from other people because uh, it makes somebody very cloistered or hermit-like if you have a ring of Saturn. 
where if you have a ring around Jupiter, you considered an adept person at philosophy or religion or in the psychic realm. Uh, if you talk about Apollo, the ring finger, you're talking about creativity, uh, sunshine, the sun shines on you. It's, Apollo is actually considered the sun, and it, it has a lot to do with the first house of the sun, which is Leo, and also Aquarius, and people born on the 1st, 10th, 19th, or 28th of the month. So if you see a large Apollo finger... Uh, it would indicate that there would be somebody with one of those attributes having a lot to do with the life. Or if you see a prominent mount right under Apollo, the mounts are the fleshy area right under the, the fingers. The mount of Jupiter, the mount of Saturn, the mount of Apollo, and this is Mercury. And Mercury has a lot to do with business and communication uh, and uh, a long mercury fi finger uh, means you're a very good communicator. And the size of mercury in the mount has a lot to do with those attributes. It was said that if somebody has a twisted mercury finger, that they're kind of like tend to be a little oily or crooked. Uh, if uh, there's a ring from uh, the Apollo finger right to Jupiter, that's called the, the girdle of Venus. It usually makes somebody a very temperamental character. The line right above the headline is called the life, uh, the heart line, I should say. And it starts in, in certain places. Of course, if it started with Jupiter, that would give somebody a lot of pride in their relationships. But they have various uh, areas where the, they start and finish, and I'm going to go over that when I go over the individual lines. I'm trying to get people familiar with the hand so it doesn't look scary and it doesn't look confusing, but it's actually a map of the life. Now, the heart line could have two propensities. One is the physical health of the blood system and the heart, and the second has to do with emotions and relationships. So if there's a bubble or a, a break or a f tasseling of the heart line, uh, it, it could mean a physical thing if it affects the lifeline, but if the lifeline's unaffected, then it's an emotional situation. So the lifeline tells you if something's physical or, mo or, or emotional, like a, a tasseled headline at a certain point. If you, it's not indicated on the lifeline, then, then it's, uh, it has to do with confusion and stress and not a physical ailment to the head or neck or face or whatever. Uh, this a little ring around here is the line of intuition. When somebody has that, they're a very intuitive person. And it's on the Mount of the Moon, which is lunar. And like I said, when I, I was telling you, uh, a lun uh, the word lunar comes from the moon. And it's also associated with the Neptune numbers. And the moon, uh, moon people are those born on the second uh 11th, 20th, or 29th of any month, and people born at the end of June or in July. And again, it's affected also by February or Aquarius. Now, Neptune is definitely affected by Pisces. And, and like I said, Jupiter is affected not only by Sagittarius, but by Pisces as well. Now, I, I discussed this before. There's three bracelets at the wrist, and it represented from top to bottom, health, wealth, and happiness. And the, and the Greeks and, and uh, a lot of times the shaman uh, would tell somebody, uh, particularly a woman, like I said before, if the, if the first bracelet was broken or raised in, up into like a, a V uh, or a pyramid-like indication, they would tell them that uh, having birth would be uh, very sensitive for them. Uh, now, when you look at the uh, fate line, the fate line usually starts at the wrist and works up towards the headline. And it has to do with somebody's career and their activities, and also whether they're acknowledged for what they do. Now, when the line twists and turns, so is the life twisting and turning. If the line is broken, that means their career is changed. Now, with a female, a lot of times their career could be due with the home as well as a job. 
And then you have the sun line, which is right under Apollo. That's why they call it the sun line. See, that's the first house of Leo, etc. And and Apollo, if somebody has this uh, sun line, the sun shines on them. They get some acknowledgement for the things that they do. So when you look at the map of the hand, it looks like much, but when you break it down into sections, uh, it's very doable. And we're going to go over each line and, and make some even more uh, statements and what the lines mean and what changes in the lines. And, 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 and it's not so bad as people think. But uh, I, I drew this big chart. I use it in classes, and, and it really paints a picture. you got to go section by section, or else you say, oh, my God, how do, I, uh, how do I say anything looking at this confusing hand? Now, if this were a hand, I would call it a fire hand because the, the fingers are short compared to the size of the palm. You know, that, that's a lesson in chironogamy, which I was saying before. But I'm going to go on to more things.